Many people walking past and we think, what are these people doing standing here outside the European Commission offices on a cold November afternoon? Well, the reality is that the European Commission is the executive arm of the European Union. It's the European Commission that wants to annex Northern Ireland. And we must be under no illusion that this isn't dreamed up by Boris Johnson. It's signed up to by Boris Johnson, but it's not dreamed up by Boris Johnson. It's not dreamed up by Leo the Lioness Varadka. It's dreamed up in the heart of that dark empire, the European Union. It's them that decided they wanted to annex Northern Ireland. And as, as early as 2017, during this surrender process, Michel Barnier was calling for Northern Ireland to be annexed. It's the EU and it's the British media and it's the British establishment that have destabilised Northern Ireland. Now we're starting small, but these protests will grow when people realise the treacherous nature of what the British government has done and the betrayal that has been laid upon the people of Northern Ireland. These meetings will grow. There's been thousands of people meeting in orange halls and community centres in loyalist and unionist areas of Northern Ireland. There's thousands of people, there's thousands of people getting registered to vote and there will be thousands of people mobilising. When you think about what happened during the Troubles, the IRA didn't manage to bomb or shoot Northern Ireland out of the United Kingdom. But with skullduggery and intrigue, Michel Barnier and his cronies and the people that are represented by this vile organisation, the European Union, have managed to dislodge Ulster, Northern Ireland from the United Kingdom. And we have got to do something about it, and we will do something about it. Boris has signed a betrayal act. Boris's treaty is a betrayal of the Northern Irish people. It's a betrayal of the United Kingdom, and it's a betrayal of every single one of us standing here. We don't want a treaty. We don't want a deal. We want no deal. We want a clean break Brexit. We want a no surrender Brexit. Thank you very much. Support it. Sure no surrender. No surrender. people vote for? Brexit. Brexit. And when do they want it? Now. now. What did they vote for? Brexit. Brexit. When do they want it? Now. now. What did the British people vote for on the 23rd of June 2016? Brexit. Brexit. And here we are in November 2019, and the traitors in Parliament are still thwarting the decision of the people. Traitors. It's an absolute outrage. Okay. 4 million people vote for? Brexit. Brexit. And when do they want it? Now. What did they vote for? Brexit. Brexit. When do they want it? Now. now! What did the British people vote for on the 23rd of June 2016? Brexit. Brexit! And here we are in November 2019, and the traitors in Parliament are still thwarting the decision of the people. Traitors! It's an absolute outrage. But you know what? Um, at least that man there showed a bit of enthusiasm, which I have to say I'm grateful for, for everybody who is standing behind this banner. Um, and I have stood alongside them today. And it is cold, obviously. It's Britain. It's not wet, which is remarkable. But we're in November. Time is running out. And we have had all these meetings lately. I've attended a few of these meetings. There have been loyalists and unionists in these meetings. We've all come up with ideas and plans as to how we can do our bit. Because nobody can do everything, but everyone can do something. 
And whether that is coming out and standing in solidarity, whether that is going to your local MPs and pressurising them, whether that is contacting our brothers and sisters on the mainland, we can all do our bit. And so the people that are doing their bit, I think are going to grow. Richard touched on this. There is momentum. We've seen it with the meetings. And in the meetings, people have been saying, we need to take to the streets. Because meetings aren't enough. Where do we want it? No. <laughs> In England right now, this event is not an isolated event. We've got people in London. There's people outside the European Commission offices in London. We've got people in Edinburgh. They're protesting outside the European Commission offices in Edinburgh. We've got them in Cardiff. So this is a UK-wide demonstration. They're all small demonstrations. It's been called at very, very short notice. But this is what we must do. We must get boots on the ground and boots to the ballot box. And I want to call, I've lived in Northern Ireland. I served in Northern Ireland when the IRA were trying to kill soldiers and policemen. I know what it's like to have terrorists try and kill me. But I want to say this, the people of Northern Ireland have got to understand, you are not standing on your own against this betrayal act. And we need to mobilise, and we need to get tens of thousands of people on the street, and we need to get boots to the ballot box, yes. We need to kick the Remain parties in the ballot box where it hurts. But as well as that, we need to get boots on the ground. And wouldn't it be an amazing thing if 10,000 British patriots, loyalists and unionists made their way down to Dublin and stood outside Leo Varadkar's office so that he couldn't ignore us anymore, so he couldn't put his fingers in his ears and he'd have to sit up and take notice that Ulster is not for sale and Northern Ireland is not for sale and we're not going to give up, we're not going to be silenced and we're not going to go away. And as everybody always says, in Northern Ireland and Ulster when you're making a speech, no surrender. Is on a knife edge, and we have all convened at these meetings, and we have all spoken about what we can do. Well, now it's time for action. We have heard the words of loyalists and unionists, and God bless them across Northern Ireland coming together. Everyone trying to do their bit for this union. But now it's time for action. Now it's time for us to show this establishment, not just these traitors behind us. The European Union exists and will do as long as they can by exploiting and bullying member states. And we were the first to say no more. Britain is made of greater stuff than to be bullied by these unelected bureaucrats. And we made our decision to leave. But let me point something out here. It is not the European Union and its own form that's keeping us in this situation where we are still in the EU and we're getting Brexit by name only. We are still tied into this customs union and we are having a hard border throughout the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. It is not the European Union. We can walk out of this situation. We should have done when we cast our vote. It is the British establishment. And I am standing here today as an English woman in Northern Ireland where I have made my home 
And I am reminding people that yes, it was an Englishman that betrayed you. It is an Englishman that is pushing this betrayal act upon you. And this may seem like a tiny drop in a huge ocean, but as one English woman in this beautiful country, I am telling you that you are not alone. This is a 